Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joe Yates and I'm glad you're back. So tonight we're getting ready for drifting on Friday. So excited. I've got the spark plugs out because we previously did a compression test just to see where the health of the motor was. And so we need to put the spark plugs back in. I'm going to show you two methods on how you can gap your own spark plugs. Previously, I've just ran copper NGK plugs. They're a cheaper plug, but they do their job just fine only you need to replace them more often. Because I have the Audi R8 coil packs, the Volkswagen coil packs, they do provide an excellent strong spark already. So I feel that there's no need to gap the plugs down furthermore. I'm going to be running just the standard gap that the plug comes in. Bear in mind that the plug that I've chosen is a colder plug, runs a little bit cooler when it shoots that spark out. So I've got all the spark plugs out, the coil packs are out, and I've made an effort to clean each spark plug hole, just getting any dirt and crud out. So they're nice and clean, ready for the new spark plugs to go back in. All right, here we go, guys. So these are the standard plugs I've been running. They're just an NGK copper plug, though they are actually a colder plug. And the number that you want to look for, if for these, these particular ones for the Nissan SR20, is BCPR. 7ES, but it's the 7 which indicates the heat range rating for the actual uh, spark plug. So the higher the number, the colder the plug. Alright, so we've got one plug here, and we're going to check the gap. We're going to do it the easy way with my snap-on tool. So this snap-on tool, it does read in inches if you're used to reading in thou. I'm a metric guy. Previously, I'd gap them to roughly between 0.6 and 0.7 of a mil. And what you do, really easy, you get your new spark plug, slide the tool in, and it's just a matter of sliding up until it stops, and then you're at what it is. So right here, it's about 0.85 of a mil. Now, I'm not going to gap these plugs because the R8 coil pack is such a great uh, source for ignition. It's got a really strong spark already. Guys, if you've got an SR20 and you've got the stock coil packs, S13, S14, S15 coil packs, you can gap them down to 0.6 to 0.7 of a millimeter just so it maintains spark when you increase boost. This is how I'd normally gap my spark plugs if I was gapping them. Now, what I would do very gently find a surface you want a hard surface but wood will do this will do just give it a tap give it a tap on a hard surface and then re-measure okay i'll have to hit a little harder okay i've moved over to a harder surface so you just want to give the spark plug a gentle tap on the flat you just want to close the gap up a little bit now I'm going to go over and I'm going to recheck that. So we check it now, it's at about 0 0.7, 0 0.7 a mil. So that's how you do it. Really easy, guys. You just tap it on a surface to bring the gap down. Check it with your tool. And if you don't have this fancy tool, what you can do, and this is how I used to do it, grab the feeler gauge. That's 0.61. And this is all you do. Just So that's gapped nicely down to 0.6 of a mil this is 0.7 it's not quite at 0.7 yeah it's about 0.6 of a mil normally i'd shoot for about 0.7 of a mil so guys that's 0.7 of a mil that's how you gap your spark plugs either with a fancy tool like this but you don't need to be as fancy as me you can or you can if you want to you go out and buy the tool if you want um just use your feeler gauges just start off with the thickness that you think it's going to fit in figure out what that is and then if you need to go up or down in thickness to get where you where your gap is all right i'm going to take all these plugs out inspect them make sure that they're not closed that the tip isn't closed in on itself now i'm going to check each plug one at a time just to make sure that the gap is not too low or not too high it's just over 0.8 of a mil about 0.85. Oh yeah, like I said guys before, I'm happy running just the standard gap for now. Because I've got the R8 coil packs, I don't see like it's going to be a problem. It'll be fine. Why I've gapped my plugs is because the stock coil packs aren't... You know when they're getting older and you increase in boost, they're not the greatest. So gapping them down just ensures that your spark won't blow out. 
under higher boost. Okay, now let's get them in. Let's get them fitted. I've gone ahead and I've just put a little bit of copper grease on the thread of the spark plug and that will just ensure that when later down the track you change your spark plugs, you're less likely to pull aluminum thread from, you know, your cylinder head. Okay, first one. Now I've got this I've got this fancy tool, the spark plug tool. Most of them come with a feature to that holds the actual spark plug to the socket. Just a little tip if you don't have a spark plug socket that holds a spark plug to the socket itself, just gently lower it down with like your longest finger against the side wall, against the tube, and then that way basically if you just dropped it you probably close the gap on the spark plug and you change that actual gap. So you don't want to do that, hence why you just lower it down. Now to tighten them up. So you just go until that washer, you can feel it crush, you can feel it crush and then you'll get to a point where you can just go no further and then you, I usually just get to that point and then I'll just give it a little bit extra. You can actually feel it crush that washer and hold the head of the actual extension for the actual spark plug that way you're not going to risk actual, actually breaking the spark plug itself if you can use a torque wrench find out what the spec is and talk to spec I've just been doing this long enough now working on my own cars and things that I've got a really good sense of feel of how far I can go I'm just checking each one to make sure they're tight. Just a habit of mine. I like to check everything third time. All right, that'll do. Okay, now we've got the spark plugs in. You can see down there. I've cleaned out the spark plug wall tube from all the dirt. So guys, the only downside with running these R8 coil packs is that you do get a lot of dirt like dust if you're out oh, bloody cars yeah one downside to running the uh, R8 coil packs without the proper bracketry and seals is that you do get a bit of dirt a bit of dust and dirt down in the holes um, but it doesn't actually affect the performance um, obviously it's just a little bit of dust a little bit of dirt's not going to hurt it doesn't affect the actual contact points of the actual spark plug and the actual coil pack itself. But just something to note if you're thinking about upgrading your coil packs to R8 coil packs, you may want to seek out the actual proper bracket. I'm pretty sure there's a few businesses, companies that are actually making the kits with the proper, proper bracket and the actual seals. So they will be watertight. Just a mental note, if you do it without the bracket, just make sure that you don't get any water in the valley here. If you clean your motor down, just clean around and clean carefully because you see how I accidentally got a bit of water in number four. Didn't affect the performance, but it could have well and truly if I had got like a lot more water in. Fortunately, it was just a little sprinkle. All right, now for the fun part, putting out your coil packs back in. Yay! So push down and you can feel the actual coil pack click onto the head of the spark plug. And then I know it's secure. If anyone out there is concerned with the actual stability of the coil packs themselves, the actual clamping of the actual coil pack onto the spark plug is actually quite good. That's solid. Once they're clicked on, like they're not going to go anywhere. But yeah, guys, these coil packs have been great. I've not had a problem at all. Definitely a worthwhile upgrade if you're considering. But yeah, maybe consider getting the bracket with the appropriate seals to make them watertight. 
Yeah, last one, number one. And then we'll fire it up. All right, time for start up. You making sure it's not in gear. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I know it was pretty basic, but anyway, I had to do it and I had to show you guys. So next stop, drifting, Friday night drifts. I'll see you there. Stay tuned for more videos to come. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, peace out.